How do folks? This here's the old mountain man that's talking at you from the back side of this here lake in the hills of Arkansas. Well, I had me an idea last night. Don't know if it was somebody else's idea that just jumped in my head or, or what, but yeah, you, know, you ever heard of the hive mind or hive consciousness? Where a group of insects or animals just seem to to communicate somehow or another without a spoken language or, uh, or whatever you just yeah seems like that happens with humans sometimes but anyway we're not gonna go off all into this uh, telepathy crap that I've been investigating here lately but this is about tender about survival I was sitting there thinking I was thinking about how some of my friends on YouTube had used uh, dryer lint and they take dryer lint and they put a little wax on it and then they'll uh, spark it up and it burns longer and burns more effectively but there's a there's a drawback with dryer lint and that's why they put the wax on there to make it burn more effectively and burn longer Plus, you got radiant flame. You got like a little candle-like radiant flame right there. It just and that's what most people look for. Now, whenever they use char cloth or magnesium, they're in a they want they want to get that flame burning. That's what they want to do. They're just so anxious to do it. Sometimes they screw it up. So beginners always need a little encouragement. And oh boy. Guess who just walked up? <laughs> there's little. Yeah, there's the ham. <laughs> he gotta get in the picture. Yes, he do. <laughs> Hello, buddy. You was over there laying down until I started talking. You thought I was talking to somebody, didn't you? Huh. Yeah, well, I am. I'm talking to a whole bunch of people out there, but it's on video, pal. Oh, you don't want me to talk to nobody but you, huh? Big old baby. You big old baby. Come on, scoot over. That's my pooch. She's a big old lovable chow hound. Come on, little bear, move. I got work to do here. Anyway, I'm thinking about char cloth and dryer lint and magnesium and all that. And how, you know, beginners, they need that kind of encouragement with that radiant flame and all. And so it just makes people comfortable to have that tinder put off a flame that they can build with. And hopefully they don't screw it up and wind up having to take longer than necessary to get your get their fire going. Little bear, you just insist, don't you? Don't you? Yeah. <laughs> You big old knothead. You big old knothead. Yeah, everybody loves Little Bear. Including me, big old baby. Big old spoiled baby. Uh, anyway. Oh, dear God. This, should I even post this video? Should I try to start over again? I don't think so. But back here, I got my Coleman stove, and I got some... Uh, dry lint and old tin. I've already made up some charred dry lint, and could be somewhere out there is somebody that thought of this already. But you know, I just really don't watch bushcrafting videos anymore because everything's been so done to death that it's not even funny. Now, when it comes to making fire and going into some details, you might want to check out Nathan. I think it's Nathan's Adventures. I'll find his link, and I'll go down there. And I'll get out there on uh, YouTube and find him. I think he's subscribed to my channel. But this young man, he gets out there, and he tells you what the humidity is, 
and you know how much moisture there is in the air and all that good business and he starts a bow drill fire and hand drill fires now I've never seen anybody monitor the bar the humidity in the air before whenever they making a bow drill fire video or a hand drill fire video so uh, click on that link in the video description below and go on over and take a look at Nathan he's he knows what he's doing whenever it comes to getting those details done and a lot of people say well don't sweat the details I said well in survival if you skip over the details you're dead or you may just have a make it rougher on yourself if you don't die you'll just be miserable or make it rough on yourself and you're sitting there wondering well what the fuck just happened well you didn't pay attention to the details <laughs> got the Coleman one burner stove that I use for cooking my meals and uh, I had to pick some of the some stuff out of here that was not cotton lint and yeah, there's some dog hair in it <laughs> don't really matter do it little bear yeah but yeah buddy this this stuff here it's kind of messy and kind of sort of but it's just not too awful bad I'm gonna spark some of this up build a little small fire and then I'm gonna put some of this in here and show y'all that it don't take that long to get it done this stuff this dryer lint it tastes practically lickety split on uh, on there it's a fraction of the time I'm making char cloth is what I'm saying Okay, I'll be pausing the video because I got enough. I got a product I want to suggest to you. Strike anywhere kitchen matches. Those big old kitchen matches had whenever we was kids. Back then they was red and white. They had red phosphorus on them with a white tip of or a tip of white phosphorus. Then you could strike them on a rock, strike them on sandpaper. Uh, We've seen some guys in the movies reach over and strike one on a guy's whiskers. Well, that don't work. That's just movie shit. Anyway, folks, I'll be right back. Just give me a minute or two and get her done. Then. Oh, God, there I go with that Larry the Cable guy. Get her done. Shit. Oh, Lord. Be back here a minute, folks. Alrighty, I think I got everything going and holy mackerel that sun shining through those clouds The way that sun is shining through those clouds and the light it I don't know I hope this comes through better on YouTube after it's uploaded because it looks like I got the jaundice or something Anyway people that product I was telling you about while ago to strike anywhere matches you can get them on eBay super cheap I've ordered so many boxes I ordered a, uh, you know there was so many offered I think it's seven or eight bucks for six strike anywhere matches hey these have got a different strip on them than the others uh, these are just got the plain strip striking strip where the others are dotted but uh, you know it looked like it's got little dots all you know all over that right there but these things were out eventually and they yeah you know, they strike anywhere matches for bushcrafters campers hikers hunters fishermen yeah buddy you take you know some of these out of the box you don't got to carry the box with you, you don't got to worry about a striker you know but oh yeah there it is there's that uh, okay a little side by side comparison but they are they're both uh, strike anywhere matches and yeah, I found these on eBay and I'm like yeah alright <laughs> and I saved my matchsticks for tinder
And I had to get my coffee warmed up. Cause y'all know coffee just ain't no good if it's cold. It's nasty. My coffee's nasty when it's cold. Ooh. The megas is strong. And the striker that I'm going to use is a razor blade. Yeah, the cheap, 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 cheap razor blades from like Harbor Freight or Wally World. Um, they are made of high carbon steel, otherwise they wouldn't, and they are tempered so daggone high that, you know, if you take a little power wire part or something and grab it there and, it'll, and bend it, try to bend it, it'll just snap. That's a, they're high carbon, and I use the sharp edge. I use the cutting edge, and lean it forward at that angle. I've been doing this so dang long, I don't even pay attention to what angle that I use. Yeah, my fire steel right now. Yeah, every time I look at that crooked handle, that non, that, that un, uh, non-typical deer antler, I think about Mr. DJ Moore and the trade that we made for some elk antler and deer antler and the, uh, magnesium I sent him and he seemed to be real happy with that but yeah come on now come on we was working good here okay gotta get over here it don't well you know I'd never used these razor blades before and I'm thinking these are not I bought them thinking that they were the right kind and as I said, uh, I uh, I leave all the mistakes in my videos. I don't edit nothing out. But you can get a spark, but you just got to work harder at it. Kind of like with muscle shell or glass or any other damn thing. You just got to work harder with it to get a damn spark. Well, fuck. I guess those are for whittling now. Whittling and opening boxes and crap. Uh, I've never had to pause a video twice. I've never had to pause a video twice, but and hopefully I won't have to. Uh, cigarette lighters and other do hickeys, watch them call it, and what not. Do I even have a pocket knife on me? Yep, pausing the video again. Excuse me, folks. <sighs> All right, I got the little Schrade, vintage Schrade, old timer. The one that I used to skin that squirrel in the survival meat video where I clean the squirrel, I prepare the squirrel and cook it and eat it. Now that is better. That's a hell of a lot better. Now, if you use anything less than carbon steel, you're just asking to do more work. Now, well, look at there. That damn thing's working. What in, isn't that always the way? <laughs> What the fuck? What? Okay, wait a minute. All right, get the knife out right there. And that's the way. Isn't that the way sometimes it goes? I guess they are good after all. They're not getting any rolling sparks or any sparks hitting the ground. Now, there's some sparks hitting the ground. That's what I want. Now, little lid here with them holes in it that I used in the instructional fire building video. Yep, that allows for some air to get up in there just naturally. Well, hell, I don't know all them leaves in the way. There wouldn't be much air getting up in there. But have y'all ever thought about using one of those stainless steel See if I can describe this thing. It's a 
little old outfit that it fans out and, f and folds up. It's made of stainless steel, got holes all in it, got these little panels all around, and it's it's used for steaming vegetables. It's got three or four little old legs about that big. You set it down in there in a the pot with a little bit of water and steam your vegetables. You can use one of them to build a dang fire and also use it for a damn stove. Seen it on Facebook. Seen it on Facebook. It was demonstrated in pictures, not video. But by golly, they are just some things you can just improvise, adapt, and overcome in a, a just lickety split. Now, let's get on with this and see here what I can do. I'm going to use a generous portion of this stuff, and oh, how it takes a spark quick. Maybe I can just use a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit, as my little my little girl Ella used to say. God rest her soul. She's a sweet girl, but she got out there in the world, messing around, got herself, got herself killed. Well, this is a learning experience, all right. This is a learning experience. Should have went with the uh, the larger amount. Okay. Well, I won't be packing any of this in my survival gear. This is just a... Uh, if y'all want to use dryer lint, uh, I would suggest just plain dryer lint with some wax like some of the other YouTubers are making out there. You know, just... Look up Dryer Lint Tender on YouTube and you'll see some of the other YouTubers out there in the bushcraft community. I did uh, Google, or not Google, but I did a YouTube search on um, charred Dryer Lint Tender. And there was none out there that I know of. Uh, somebody probably already did it and and just didn't post it because it was a fail. Now this caught with one spark. I don't know what. <laughs> it's been raining here a lot, and I think my tender is a little damp. And that that lint just burned up before I could get a fire going. So we got a lesson here. <laughs> my, my lesson is I should have tried this shit before I tried to make fire with it before I. Uh, before I did anything. The leaves caught. Y'all could see all that smoke and everything. Now, oh, sometimes things just don't go the way you want them to or need them to. And now, yeah. Maybe I should have went and got me a board and a stick. <laughs> Made the, uh, Made a damn uh, bow drill fire or something. The way Nathan did. Yeah. I'm learning about that stuff. I'm not closed minded to it, but by golly, some people just make it look so dang easy. And when I try it, it's like, Ugh! So, yeah. I think 
char cloth. Pause it for a... No, I'm not even going to pause it. I'll be right back. Had that big old piece of char cloth sitting out there, laying out there under the carport. It fell out of a batch that I had uh, that I had made here a while back. I think that's dry. Oh, well, that's still smoking just a tad. Okay. I'm going to see if it was, this is my way of seeing if it was the fault of the, uh, if it had something to do with the dryer lint or if it had something to do with the tender, the leaves. Okay, get that turned around here where them threads are. Yeah, it's all good. Damn it. There we go. One spark. One strike. Char cloth burning slow as it usually does. That may be the key. Well, there you have it, folks. The dryer lint just plain flat out sucked. That charred dryer lint just plain flat out sucked. Now, what comes to mind here is the, the charcoal just burned up too quick. It didn't have time. It didn't have time to get an intense enough heat going. Although I did have to work a little longer, just a little bit longer with the uh, with the char cloth. The char cloth made an ember that complete. Even though these leaves are dry. Everything's got a little tiny bit of water in it, even matchsticks. Oh, and if you want to make matches waterproof, here's another thing I've seen on a survival blog. I uh, believe it was uh, there was there's a community on uh, Google Plus that I'm a member of, and I've seen where you can soak matches. Just take the whole match. Put them in a bunch of uh, turpentine and then set the matches up to dry and then coat them with wax and they'll uh, they'll be waterproof. Well, the turpentine, you know, I'm combining two different methods. Uh, soak them in turpentine, let them dry out, and they'll be waterproof for a good long while. But if you coat them with wax, it'll... Uh, It'll last longer. 
keep the waterproofing up longer. I'm like I said, I'm combining two different methods. But the turpentine will take out the dang, uh, would, would take out the water out of the wood, and uh, won't hurt the, uh, it won't hurt the phosphorus on your matches. Uh, well, yeah, char cloth people. That charred. I thought I had a good idea with that charred dryer lamp, but yeah, it's all a learning process. Folks, I'll be 50 years old my next birthday, and I never stop learning. And I, I love to learn. And speaking of learning, uh, Hoople's Cat over in the UK. Brother man, I want to thank you so very much for educating me on histoplasmosis, a fungal infection that can be caused, a respiratory infection that can be caused by a fungus that can be found in bat guano and chicken crap. Uh, I learned so much. It could cause heart failure, kidney failure. It could cause all the, you know, a myriad of different problems. And the one thing I figure saved my life or helped in case that fungus was in the bat guano that got in my face. Then that Amazon poorly packaged video I figured the one thing if that fungus was in there the one thing that saved my life or kept me from getting sick having a bad time with it was the iodine that I take every day you know I take either 2% or 5% every day depending on how I feel you know about 30 40 drops something like that of that J. Crow's Lou Gall solution. <coughs> I posted notes on uh, public notes on Facebook that was research of doctors, verified doctors, you know, doctors that have been in the business so long and then they said, well, people are are getting hurt, people are being harmed by the medical industry. I want to help. So they went rogue, published their findings online where the AMA could not uh, screw with them and, and, you know, once people got a hold of the information and they proved it to themselves, well, what can the AMA do? Not a damn thing. Oh, boy. The American Medical Association should be renamed. I'm not around. <laughs> not real sure what kind of funky little name that I could come up with. <laughs> but, oh man, but speaking of something, something, uh, I want to kind of touch on a little, little piece of a a movie that I watched here recently. I seen a movie on YouTube called Oh Zombie about Osama Bin Laden becoming a zombie. And, uh, oh God, one of my least favorite characters in all history is Osama Bin Laden guy, man. I was so glad whenever SEAL Team 6 waxed that bastard. Anyway. This one guy, he's part of a, a ranger team, and he's going along. And he's he's referred to as Joker, you know, kind of like in Full Metal Jacket. And he had this little song that's kind of beating around in my head. You've heard of One Little, Two Little, Three Little Indians? Well, what about One Little, Two Little, Three Little Zombies? Shoot them in the head and wipe their brains off me. <laughs> I can't get that out of my head. <laughs> It's so much fun, and it's it's a, one of those fun things you don't want to get out of your head. It's entertaining, kind of like that happy thought that you need to find every once in a while. To, yeah. You know, that positive thought that keeps your spirits lifted up whenever hard times are around and, and all this. 
you know, if something negative hits you, you need something positive to draw on, and it just keeps my spirits up just to have that little that little ditty banging around in my head. It's it's just fun. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna post the link in the description below for those matches where you can get you you know six boxes for like eight bucks, maybe nine bucks, and. Uh, I think the name of, not that it's really relevant right at this moment, you'll see the name Summer Green Tall or something like that. Uh, you know, these online screen names and site, you know, the names we use sometimes are <laughs> kind of odd, but I've ordered probably a dozen boxes of these matches so far and some of them are undercharged, some of them are overcharged and what I mean by that is the match, the chemical, not chemical, but the mineral, phosphorus and just so happens this is open, yeah it broke open, it's not the fault of the, the person that shipped them, Let's see if I can all right, here's one that's got big old fat amount of white and green phosphorus. And yes, phosphorus comes in a whole range of colors. I don't want to. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and here's another one. All right. Every reloader out there ought to know what overcharged and undercharged means. See? It ain't got anything to do with money. It's the amount of phosphorus on the ends of those matches. See what I mean? Yeah, these may be uh, factory rejects or some damn thing that somebody's got a hold of. Or it could be they just stocked up on them in the day whenever uh, strike anywhere matches were real popular. I hope y'all can hear that over yonder. Boy, trying. Shit, maybe a bump fire stock. Shit. <laughs> I hope that's coming through. It's reloading. Oh, come on, you can change a magazine faster than that. <laughs> uh, I don't want that person on my team if it takes them half a minute to change a magazine. Jesus Christ in heaven. This has turned out to be a fun video. Yeah, turned out kind of screwed up. It's it's going to be about 35 minutes, maybe. It's at 33, 29, 33, 30, 31, 32. <laughs> oh, Lord of mercy. Folks, this survival thing, it can be fun at times. And the one thing i found that people can, they can acquire all kinds of skills. But it's existing in an environment outside their nice comfortable home that generally gets to them. It's that, uh, I don't want to say culture shock, but the, the change in environment, it's, you get, the number one, the absolute number one thing about survival and surviving is being adaptable. If you cannot change, if you can't, if you don't have it up here, you're not gonna have it out there. It's you gotta, you gotta change. You know, you got to. That's what life is about, changing. And I was telling some folks last night on the uh, the Godfather and Wifey chat that I hit, I hit the like button on. I was fortunate enough to keep company with these folks on the panel. And at times things were real quiet and at times we were having fun. But, you know, I was the new guy and it kind of happens that way with the new guy. 
coming on the panel things get quiet and yeah there's an adjustment period when you start attending uh, new chats like that new live events on on YouTube or anywhere you know people will warm up to you eventually but hell I think really the best part was whenever we went off the air I thanked them for keeping me company allowing me on their li their live event because it helps ease the loneliness of being out here in the woods and yeah I used to live in towns and cities and I had friends I had bunches of friends all over people like me they take to me pretty easy uh, and just being I forgot what it was like being a part of uh, a live event and directly communicating with people versus being on video it's just you know it's a world of difference world of difference anyway I figure this video went on long enough and I will end my video here in my tradition with my traditional saying and I mean it I mean there's enough bad in the world be good to yourselves be good to each other treat people the way you want to be treated not because you want something from somebody or what have you that there's any selfish motivation behind it but just do it just to do it it makes the world a better place it makes you know we talked about positivity on uh, in that chat with the, the godfather and his wifey you know it was positivity you know, it does truly truly help I'm going to talk with y'all later it's old mountain man signing off from the back side of this here lake wishing y'all all the best you know remember trial and error and learning that's what life is sometimes about y'all take care adios